Hey guys, so this is going to be a start to finish how I come up with my sticker ideas. Now this was a commission and I decided that I would do three poses of each Pokemon that she wanted. So in total I was making two sticker sheets with three each, three characters on each sheet. So. She told me what characters she was after, and then I ended up going through and making some sketches in my sketchbook for her to approve which one she wanted. And then from there, we're going to bring this into my iPad. So I'm just looking at Pinterest pictures of each Pokemon and finding different poses and how I kind of want to make it my own and what I'm looking to make and Then from there I'm just having some fun trying to figure out the characters really so then from here I literally just took pictures on my iPad and I brought them in so I'm going to show you first the way that I have been in the past making my sticker sheets so I will use a deep brown color and I will So I like to use the monoline brush when I want perfect lines and then I will add in a mask layer and then add another layer on top of that to um, make the mask layer so that I can, um, so I make it a clipping mask over top of that purple color that you saw so that no matter what you're doing it will fill no problem and then I will always add in a extra layer and on top of that and that will be my multiply layer and then on top of that for my light colors I like to use a soft light so for the multiply I always like to use a uh, light pink color and then for the Soft light, I will just use a light white color. Um, and then from there, I'll just change my outline to to alpha lock so that you can draw over top of it. But here you can see the difference between with outline and kind of being more free with my art. And then from there with the outline. So it just really depends on what it is that you're looking for. Um, I'm just really tired of having an outline and I want to have more wobbly art and just a little bit more freeing. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Now, if you are curious, the brush that I have been using for all of these particular images are the studio pen and I just make sure that um, there is no uh, stabilization so that I can really get a feel for what it is that I'm drawing. And so the way that I do this is I have my rough on top and I've changed the opacity so that the image is quite light. Um, and then I have my color layer underneath my rough just so that I can see where I'm trying to draw. And then of course you're gonna have to touch up afterwards, but this is so that you don't have to deal with any line work. And again, it's totally preference. I'm just letting you know what I've been up to lately because I've been drawing a certain way on my iPad for over three years and I just really wanted to change. So the only time I will add in a outline is where different parts of the character meet up and I just think it will look a lot better if I add in a line layer. <coughs> so yeah, I'm just adding in these little lines so that you can actually tell the difference between uh, Mr. Mime Jr.'s little, um, I don't know if that's like a dress or something that the character wears. Honestly, I'm not really sure. I don't really know much about this character. But now I'm still doing the same thing where I have my multiply layer and I'm adding in my... Um, my shadows and then I'm going to do the same thing with my lighter color so I just use the soft light with some white color and then I will just you know add in where I think the light will touch and now I'm going to add in um, just 
some whites and then just Gaussian blur the the color so that it isn't as apparent <laughs> words. And so from now on, I'm I'm literally just making the other couple of characters. Um, yeah, I just did a really fast speed run of all of this just because I mean, I just don't know what you guys are interested in, honestly. So if you want me to go more in detail on me just drawing on my iPad, uh, definitely let me know. I'm having a lot of fun doing all of these for you guys. But again, I just did my uh, mask layer is what I call it. And then everything you draw on top of that, you just make sure to select clipping mask so that you don't have to worry about anything going outside your lines which or your drawing which is super fantastic you don't have to be try and be as clean with your work if you will um and yeah i added a couple little things that i thought would look really cute on the sticker sheet for my client just so that it's more than just the uh, pokemon characters and because it's white there's a lot of white for this particular pokemon i decided you know what let's just draw the wings because it's not going to be really that noticeable since it's white um and then we're going to duplicate the character because i found out this is a new character that i didn't even know existed but they're always in doubles so there we go and then from now we're doing, and then now we're doing, it's like this derpy Pokemon of some kind. Please forgive me. I am not too familiar with the newer Pokemon in all honesty. So um, yeah, I had a lot of fun working this way and definitely I've got a lot of growth to go through, but layers are always your best friend. Having things on multiple layers, uh, especially when you're drawing things like those little side wings on the head so that you can put it behind what you're drawing um and honestly it's really handy when it's on your ipad so i hope you guys uh will try some of these steps out but let me know if you need me to be a little bit more clear on anything um i've just been working in this fashion for a really long time that sometimes i'm not the best with explaining things <laughs> just because I'm not really sure um, because I've been doing it for so long so it almost becomes like second nature if you will but yeah um, the biggest time I ever use lines with this new art style that I'm trying is just when things touch and I need it to make a little bit more sense as to what's going on with the piece then that's where I will use the lines or you can also use shadow in that sense so that you don't have to put any lines but somewhere like you saw it's fin slash arm um, you definitely want to use a line there because it's the same color and it's hard to see what's going on so again i did some shadows and now i'm adding in some light and then from here we're just going to you can airdrop it or whatever however you bring it in honestly I, it's harder for me because i work on a um, Windows computer, so I usually Dropbox it or Google Drive it to myself. So at this stage, you would have completed making your stickers, your drawings that you're interested in making into stickers, and also you've imported them into your computer. Now I will be using Photoshop and the Cricut, so if you don't have these things, obviously you know make do with what you have um but that's what i will be using in this video because i know some people have um literally said you know oh on other videos i don't have that software there are free ones to use so do check that out it's not that what i'm doing won't suffice for what you're doing but definitely it will have to change slightly also i do have another video that will go into greater detail um, that will show you how to make your BG template and all of that good stuff which is still relevant and I will be skimming through that pretty quickly just because this video is going from start to finish of creating a cohesive sticker sheet and I will be also showing a new or newer version of the 
Cricut software that I didn't have in my older video. So um, I will leave a timestamp down below, so definitely go check that out and it will bring you right to that part where it will show you how to make your BG. But for this video, we will be already using my existing BG that I do show you how to make in that video, so it's still relevant. And so from here, we're just going to be importing our stickers. So I'm just gonna go in order from what the commission was for this. So I am going to be taking my images here and um, you want to flatten all your images first and then what you'll be doing is taking those images and importing them into your background with um, that has all of your templates set up already so I'm just going to unlock any layers that need unlocking and I will just be dragging and dropping all of my elements into here like so and I will be also making sure that we're on the very top of the element that I am looking to add my stickers onto and I will be closing everything else that isn't important. So at this stage, I am also just going to um, go through this really quickly because again, this is something that I did go through in my previous video. So I'm just going to kind of time lapse all of this here and then we will move forward. Now this is the first template I am going to make and from here because I'm not going to be changing the header or anything for the background so I'm going to just close that on the side here and I'm also going to group all of my Pokemon characters so just control G and then from here I am first going to save this as is so Pokemon then to first save the background and I have added in these embellishments into my background layer so that it will not cut out. Now you can keep that with your let's say Pokemon characters that you are creating but in this case I just want it to be something added into the background so it will just be flat it won't be an actual peel off sticker so I'm going to save this Pokemon going to save this as a PNG and then I am going to turn off the background and only turn on my foreground characters and then I'm going to save this again as a PNG you want to save it as a PNG so that it doesn't have a background okay so after that we're going to be doing the same thing again with the next sticker group of characters I have so I'm just gonna delete this turn my backgrounds on again and import my characters here Now at this stage, you would have formatted and saved your stickers as PNGs, and now we're going to be creating new projects. So you're going to open up your Cricut Design Space and hit new project, and we're going to be uploading our stickers, and this is exactly the same way that I have shown you in my previous video. So we're going to hit complex, apply and continue, print then cut image and we're going to be doing that for 
all of the backgrounds and the Pokemon characters. So just keep moving forward with this until you have everything added. And then what we're going to do is select everything that we want to bring into our canvas. So I'm selecting my four images and I'm going to say add to canvas. Now I'm going to just grab everything and shrink it just a little bit. I'm also going to change the background so that I can see what I'm working on. Now if you click on this background canvas right here and then we can change the color. So I'm going to make it purple just so I can see what I'm doing. And what I like to do is move my character all the way over to the side and hit this little nifty offset. And then we're just going to play with the offset until we're happy with our cut lines here. You know what, we can go a little bit smaller. You could just type in the number here and then don't hit enter, but just hit outside of the window and it will apply your update and then once you're happy with it hit apply then you want to change your, the background color to white and then we're going to select everything and then say flatten then from here we're going to duplicate our background and you want to have a total of five backgrounds so copy one two three four and I'm just gonna kind of throw them over here. Then select them all like this and hit align and then hit center. And then we're just going to grab our little guy here. I'm going to just right click here and say bring to front. You can also do that here as well. You just right click and say bring to front. And then I'm just going to place it until I'm happy with how this looks. And then I'm going to select everything and say attach. And then we're going to be doing this exact same thing to this version right here. So I will speed run through this quickly. From here, I'm just going to duplicate my image, so Control C, Control V, and then what I'll do is select both of them, hit Align, and Align to Top. I'm also going to just make this a little bit smaller so we can see what we're doing. Then I'm going to Control C, Control V this one. well as these ones. This just makes it easier for your Cricut to cut. Um, I never did this step before. And then from here we're just going to select everything and hit attach. And then of course this will be too big as you can see here for your Cricut to cut. So um, this, it, these are mini sticker sheets. So 5.2 or sorry 9.25 enter. And then I'm going to save this. And then it is time for us to send this to the printer. So we'll just hit make it. And then you can see what this looks like on your sticker sheet. Hit continue. And then from here you would just go according to your printer settings as well as I have little shorts and I talk about this in my previous video. So I will check back with you guys very shortly. When I print out my stickers, I will add in a little bit of washi tape or even some masking tape to hold on my stickers. Uh, my sticker sheets because I use recycled matte paper and I find that the light grip once you've used it a couple of times it really doesn't like to hold the paper so I kind of have to do that so that it doesn't pull up off of my uh, light grip paper but you can clean your mats 
with just some soapy water, which has been really helpful for me before. Um, so hopefully that is a nice little troubleshooter if you guys need that. And always fold up your paper or your mat so that you can pull off your sticker sheets. But here they are all finished. Which sticker sheet do you guys like the most? This was um, a big endeavor for me to do. I ended up getting a little art burnt out after making these. Maybe I tried to do everything way too quickly. I don't know. Anyways. Um, let me know what sticker sheet you like the most and if you are interested in videos like this and what kind of how-to video you'd like to see me do in the future. I'm thinking maybe like how to come up with ideas and stuff like that in the first place. Let me know if that's something you'd like and I am more than happy to create more content for you guys. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to put a little, I will put a little star in the comment section below and I will see you guys on the next one. I love you. Goodbye.